people here in person and also for those who are tuning in online, welcome. I'm so looking forward to this chat with you. My name is Jackie Habib. I'm a journalist and, as Cynthia mentioned, a member here at Barraza Media Lab. And um, today we're going to be in conversation with Mark Masai, who is a seasoned journalist that I'm sure you all know um, in Kenya. He has worked for many media organizations um, here in the country and has had a recent uh, transition in his career that we're going to talk about. So looking forward to chatting about his career trajectory and um, some of the hustles that you do outside of journalism as well. Watch it, Carrie is listening, so, so <laughs> don't give it all away. <laughs> all right, so um, thanks, Mark, for joining. Asante. Absolutely. And hi, guys. Nice to have you with us, Asante Nikokuja. So, Mark, I think a lot of people who are here are curious about your career trajectory. But before we get to that, I want to chat a little bit about what it is that inspired you to pursue journalism um, as a young man. What was it that drew you to the profession? Girls. Uh, <laughs> seriously, though, when I started, uh, at least when it, it first hit me that I should get into media, not necessarily journalism, so let me not water it down, uh, I was just breaking my voice. My voice was breaking in um, high school. And we were fortunate enough to have a house phone. And so I'd start speaking like during holidays, get into trouble with my mom, but I'd speak to girls and they would be like, oh, I love, the, love your voice. I was like, hey, there's, there's something here. Because you know, you're in high school, you're in that place where you're trying to figure out your career. At first I wanted to be the dent a dentist because I used to go to the dentist a lot. Then I was told chemistry, biology, is, and I said, okay, no, maybe not. And then architecture, and then I was told the other qualifications. And I still went on with drawing and design. But then, <laughs> so I was like, hey, what do you have in your hands? Like, I'm not saying I was dumb, but I, <laughs> why did you laugh, Modoni? I, but I, I really wasn't gifted with, like, math and, and the technical ones, much as I did all the three sciences and, and uh, yeah. And they, they did me over. <laughs> so, um, Aquinas High School, oh yeah, I don't know if there's anyone here. No, no, okay, yeah. Aquinas High School, that's where I was. And um, so it was really started the idea of getting into media. And it, then it was radio. Um, just because of feedback I was getting from, so actually, yeah, good girls. And then <laughs> I got into a newsroom, got the opportunity, and then it became more purposeful career, which it is right now, yeah. So in your early days in radio, talk to us about what that was like and even getting your foot in the door in radio to begin with. What was that experience like? Because there are a lot of young people right now who are struggling with unemployment. So how hard did you have to hustle to get into a newsroom and then to kind of start working your way into different media spaces? I was very fortunate. I didn't hustle as much. Um, I got my internship at Hope FM. And shout out to David Makuyu, uh, who was then the leader and the radio manager at Hope FM. And he gave me a chance to do internship, and that opened my eyes. I was posted at the business desk. And so when you ask how my experience was for radio when I joined, it wasn't anything like what I expected. Because, again, I, I'm telling you, I wanted to have a radio show for the girls, a late-night show to help ladies solve their love problems, I really don't appreciate how you guys are laughing. This was actually my career trajectory. <laughs> and, and then I landed on the business desk. You're being sent for functions where you're being told is this is an IPO. I'm like, what, IPO? What, an IPO for a company? And so it was quite the uh, anticlimax for me in the newsroom. But then I, it was because I was coming from a very naive point of view. And uh, I think... The way you say stars align, I was just being primed for where I ended up in, uh, for TV in a, in, a, in a newsroom. Because when you start in a business, on the business desk, because that's what was available then at Hope FM, and then gradually got into the main desk in terms of newscasting. And then I was called Abdullahi uh, Masai. Uh, you, your, your perspective kind of expands of, of what the media world has to offer. So you don't just have to close yourself out to one show, at, you know, middle of the night when you don't know how many people are listening. And now you have an opportunity to actually, hey, there's much more to a newsroom than just your radio show for the ladies. Uh, so, yeah, it, it, it wasn't anything like I expected, 
but it was good for me because it opened my eyes to what else is available. And as you had this rude awakening, maybe we'll call it, in media, that there maybe was not a space for you to have a late night show giving love advice to women. Um, how did you deal with the learning curve that came with starting to do business reporting and learning about things like IPOs and that sort of thing that you started to cover? Let me be honest, I really didn't struggle as much with the, the business desk because I chose my struggle. So an internship is what, three months? And when I was done with my internship, by that time they had given me some opportunities to do like a story, voice a story. And over time, they were like, yeah, th he, can, he can voice because he, he has a gift. Uh, and that I credit, of course, to God. And I started doing classifieds beyond the business bulletin and all. And so I, I, I was retained as, you know, come and do some classifieds. Come and do the evening bulletins after you're done with class because I was still in school. And so for me, I, didn't, I chose my struggle. I knew the business desk wasn't going to be my future much as it was my one foot in and it opened my eyes. And then there's those occasions when, yes, you're posted to the business desk as an intern, but on one of those maybe loose Saturdays when there's really no one to be there, uh, you, you're told, hey, come and fill in. And that's where you get an opportunity. And yeah, so I got into more classifieds, doing voiceovers, then grew confident in doing other commercial voiceovers, uh, then and then went back to finish my uni at Tangaza and managed to get my degree. And from there, the confidence that I built, having worked in a newsroom, much as Hope FM wasn't like necessarily mainstream, um, I was able to t try out my, my luck on Classic when I heard they were advertising for a job. They said, hey, do you want to be the next voice uh, in radio news uh, at the best station? Classic Kiss were, were the top stations then. And, and I was like, hey, I, I can do this, you know, based on the experience I had at Hope FM. Uh, hearing yourself on radio, because sometimes I'd, I'd have done the bulletin and then when I'm headed back to my hostel, I tune in just to listen. It's weird to listen to yourself, but I tune in to listen. And that does something to you when you actually hear yourself on radio, like this is actual radio. And I'm still a student. And yeah, so it gave me the the guts to try out with the big boys, that's classic uh, KISS at the time. And they, unfortunately, they wanted someone immediately uh, when, when they were sending out the advertisements. And shout out to Carol Radul, who um, gave me quite some confidence when she said, we love your voice, we need you immediately. But I said, I have to finish school. Um, she said, okay, unfortunately, we need someone now. So Fred Indimuli got the job, and I didn't. So... They said, we'll keep your voice in a voice bank. And when there's an opportunity, we'll call you. Fortunate to my uh, you know, journey, a month after graduating, that opportunity opened up and they had the voice. I'm like, hey, there was this kid who came. Why don't we call him? They call me and that's where it started with Classic. So it sounds like some of your journey was serendipitous with the opportunities you got. Break it down again, Sarah, what? <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree. I agree. And yeah. um, and I'm sure there were times where either opportunities came to you or you pursued various opportunities because you've worked in so many different media houses here, have gone back and forth between different um, medium as well. And I'm curious, maybe you can walk us through what that journey looked like of where you, you know, started off your career and then when you end up making a making a move to another place. And also, what was going through your mind as you made those decisions? Were you weighing um, your personal brand? Were you weighing income, prestige? What was it that was on your mind as you considered taking one job offer over staying in your current position? Well, initially, as because I went to journalism school, Tangaza, Social uh, Communication Institute, institution, and... Then it was from, again, a naive standpoint where I want to be on radio. I want to have a show on radio. And I started, did the course while in it, through the experience of internship and what have you, you learned as much more to it. So I went in with a me perspective, like I want to be uh, on the world stage, address the world, and they listen to me uh, as I tell them all that I know. But you... Through my course, it told me and taught me more about, A, what's your social impact in the community? 
And that's why it was called social uh, communication. They were more heavy on social impact. So at the end of the day, uh, after you do what you do, uh, what does the audience or the citizen benefit from your work? And so that kind of shaped my outlook, especially when I was finishing up. Of course, when you start, you just want to get in and get an opportunity, one foot in. Um, so you really go to what's available. Obviously, if I had the choice out of, and for an internship, I'd have gone to the number one radio, sh radio station then. That time it was KISS 100. And that would be just because association to the number one. But I didn't understand anything about brand then. I just was trying to make it, trying to break through to the you know, media world. Um, <coughs> and I remember actually once in class, it was a final lap of uni. And I used to, I still love hip hop. And I used to dress up like that, like Marvin, baggy clothes and, and whatnot. And um, I, I just, in class, I said, you know what, I, maybe I can try TV. Yeah, let me try it. And I remember people laughing because I was a kid, uh, probably didn't take me seriously, and they all knew I wanted to do radio. So they're like, really? Um, but it was more of, hey, let me give this a shot. You go in with such um, naive but positive energy, like I can do it. And that's how I started. And then from Hope FM, then I got into Classic. After Classic, while I was at Classic, someone just I, someone I knew and I interacted with while pursuing something else said, hey, I hear there's an opportunity at NTV. We want to come and try it. I'm like, yeah, let me try it. And I went and tried. They liked what they saw uh, on the, on the um, screen test. Uh, although I'll pay good money to keep that set away from any publication because I was like a, like a skeleton, you know. I remember the first screen test I did at KTN. Uh, <laughs> thank you to Michael Yer, who gave me a chance. And th what the feedback I got when I called him and said, hey, what do they say? They're like, um, they said you need to fit into your clothes, uh, go and add some weight. And, and granted, all the, the clothes I had, minus the boxer, from top to bottom, were borrowed from my boy who was taller than me and bigger than me. Because I was a guy of a baggy clothes, hip hop and whatnot. So my, th my, my boy who I used to live with then, kind of had some ca um, smart casual clothes. So Antonio Ere, big up to you, my man. Asante Sano, he gave me my first shot. Although I was told, go fill up those clothes. He, he's too small. Who would take him seriously? So it was naive but positive energy and saying, I have a gift. Let me give it a shot. And then just being in the right place at the right time in terms of being positioned. Not my skill, not my, you know, you know be best connect. It's just favor. Um, and then now, after NTV, there came an opportunity to join an a continental station, which is international. CCTV, now CGTN. And I was part of the pioneering team. So I, they poached, poached us. And I mean, I'm a young guy. At that, that point, money was a consideration because I'd worked at NTV for three years. And I think at that time, I was probably the, you know, the lowest paid anchors at the time. Uh, and I found out later, not that I was being paid any, like, you know, like peanuts, but, and I didn't have as many responsibilities as I do now in terms of family. I was living all right. But when I learned, oh yeah, dude, you were the lowest paid at that time. Money was a consideration. And I, it was really good. Let me tell you, let me just give you perspective. And I'm okay to say this because I paid the tax on it. Uh, I joined. I joined in 2011. I joined CCTV um, halfway through the month. So when I was paid and I went to check, uh, you know, the amount, it was more than what I had saved for over three years at Nation. And I was like, my goodness! I I managed to buy my first car without a DL before I learned how to drive. So of course. Kijana, kona anasumbuka, kona pesa. And like that, I, I won't lie, money was a good you know, attraction to me pursuing that opportunity. Uh, but also, I joined because besides just having a Kenyan audience, it's a pan-African audience. And what they were selling, at least what they said they're coming to do in Kenya, 
is change the narrative of Africa, where you have the Western media talking about you know how Africa is you know you know we are in it's destitute you know we're in destruction famine and all they want to change the narrative and talk about Africa as being the future. Of course, if you understand, CCTV is funded by the communist uh, leadership and they have an agenda because they want to do business with Africa. So granted, they changed the narrative on Africa and I, I was game for that. And that's what attracted me to CCTV. And true to their word, they're still selling a positive narrative of Africa. They're here to do business. Who isn't or who doesn't have an agenda? Any media house or media station, establishment, they all have an agenda. Look at who owns it and it'll tell you what you know, their, their end is in terms of their target in what they put out. So everyone has an agenda. I felt like I wanted to be associated with the agenda of CCTV and the money then. And I worked for one year, two months. NTV came calling back just before the 2013 elections. And surprise, surprise, the, the amount they had was quite different. So I was like, hey, okay, yeah, I, can, I can come back. But then, then, brand was a big reason why I came back. Because the Chinese were able to even double, perhaps, whatever nation would give me. It, <clears throat> it wasn't equal to what nation were giving me in terms of the amount, but it was more. Plus, at that time, I, I had grown to the point of appreciating what a brand is and that I had left NTV uh, a bit too soon before growing my brand based on the audience that we have at the, in, the Kenyan, in the Kenyan space. Yeah, because we have a very vibrant and active audience. And you can tell that even on KOT, when we go head to head with uh, Nigerians or TZ people, South Africans, uh, sometimes we come out bruised, but Kenyans are really keen and interested on current affairs, and they're consuming it different now, and, and, and we'll get into that. But um, I got back to build my brand. And it was during that phase after getting back that I got my own show, Press Pass, um, and grew my brand. I, I credit it to that. And I really appreciate the time that I had at Nation. Um, I'm grateful to them. Uh, and, and I am where I am because, and Mark Masai, the name, is what it is because of the time that I had and I was allowed at Nation. So I'm grateful. Making a living as a journalist is tough. Um, anyone who's worked in media knows that. And I want us to chat a little bit about that. But when you were faced with that decision of accepting potentially a pay cut for the brand, um, what was going through your mind in terms of the importance of a brand? I mean, you just credited NMG and NTV for having for creating this like Mark Masai brand that you now have and have been able to leverage in a number of different ways. For individuals maybe here or who are tuning in online and are thinking through how do they weigh decisions? Do I take a pay cut? Do I advance my brand? How do I know something will actually advance my brand or are they just selling me on this? Can you talk a little bit about your thought process when it comes to branding yourself and what that can do? I won't lie. Sometimes I regret going back to Nation. Uh, some of the people that, many of the people that I joined CCTV with then um, are still there and they're doing very well. At the time, my assessment, it wasn't just about the brand, it was also a personal journey. You're not, you're not, uh, a brand isn't just filling a space in, in, in emptiness. So you carry a brand, but there's more to, to you than just what people know you for. So at that time, I was also going through uh, being a young man, and I just wanted to find me. Uh, and that was part of the journey. So, and I did, and I did. They, they, this was a, I needed a turnaround at the time in my life. And won't get into the details out. I wasn't going through a crisis, but Nilijita Kamkutano, I saw maybe I'm spiraling somewhere else. Much as you're making the money, you're doing well, uh, there's, there's got to be more. There's got to be more to life. There's someone who knows that song. I love it. There's got to be more to life. So even beyond just branding, um, you think of yourself as a person. So I'd encourage people beyond just brand because the promise of a brand can actually... You can lose yourself pursuing the promise of a brand. Uh, it can be quite heavy if you're not prepared, if you're not mentally um, ready to really take on what 
what it asks of you because sometimes it gets hazy and you're not sure. You forget, who am I? Am I the Mark Masai, the personality, or am I Mark Masai, the person? Unajipoteza kidogo unajisahau. So I was at a point where I, was, I think you know, things were going on whirlwind personally, and I needed to get back to my true north. So I, that's one of the reasons I came back. Uh, I'm not saying CCTV or Illuminati or anything like that, but um, they're great people. Uh, I love the opportunity that I had there, and I really uh, am happy to watch the progress of some of my colleagues who I left there, like Ramanyang. He's doing great stuff there. Continental, he's, he's um, holding talks on the continent based on the platform that he has assumed. So it is a great place. If you get an opportunity to go there, if you get an opportunity to go there, please do. But don't forget yourself in the pursuit of career progress and brand growth. Uh, you forget your own growth as a person. It's think, look at it 360. It has to be a holistic approach. And that's really what informed my move back to, to NTV. And I did find myself in many ways. And it's a journey. So you go through journeys and in different phases, you feel, hey, 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 hey I need to uh, level things, level my head and stuff. So let me stop, recalibrate change direction or you know just stop and so it's yeah don't ever forget you um don't sell yourself just for the audience or the brand it can be it can be a dark place so you spoke a little bit about the personal challenges of maybe losing yourself in that kind of media space what challenges did you have when it comes to um practicing journalism were there resource constraints and other constraints against you? Did you ever feel stifled or anything like that? What are the challenges you had working in newsrooms? I think I've been very fortunate. I think I've mentioned it before. I haven't had like challenges in gaining access to an opportunity in a newsroom. I've been very fortunate, I have to say. I've witnessed that it's been hard for some people to even manage to voice a story. It was a big deal to be able to hear yourself on air for the sub-editor and the editor to agree that Mark will voice that story and he will be uh, doing pieces to camera. You were there. Before you get the approval, you have to do numerous uh, tests. Um, and there's that. There's the bottlenecks. And I was fortunate not to go through that. Maybe, and it was to my benefit, the editors, my seniors, Emmanuel Juma, um, Lina Skaikai, Pamela Asigi, and the others would protect you from perhaps handling some interviews because they felt you're not ready for it. And so that, that has happened, but it was for my benefit and for my good and also to protect the brand. Uh, and, you know, so I, but I was very fortunate in getting opportunities. People aren't always that fortunate. And then now things are getting harder um, the challenge is direct, like even resource. Uh, forget the amount of pay that you get. Just getting paid what is due to you. People aren't being paid for months on end. I, th I think we've seen that even at the standard. There was a presser today from the Kenya Union of Journalists uh, calling the company to you know, act and pay people what they owe them. And so it's, I believe it's harder now and it's getting really difficult for some to operate, and they get distracted by side hustles so that they can just make ends meet. And I, I won't blame them. You, you got, you have to, you have to get paid. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have been fortunate personally, so I can't speak of. Oh my God! I remember, I was in this room. I was trying to do a story. There was a threat to my life. You'll hear that from the greats such as uh, John Alan Namu. Who, who's had direct threats, I believe, in his, in his line of work. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the journalists in Kenya I, I think should be in this chair. Uh, I think um, this is just a rehearsal, ladies and gentlemen. John Alan Namu is coming to you <laughs> very soon. No, but he knows. I respect him. I respect what he does. And now with Africa Uncensored, and you'll be hearing him very soon. Um, I'm sure he's very open to engage and talk to people about the reality of media. Uh, he's one of the main grounded people that I have met, Charles Obo. Uh, the solids, the greats from back in the day who, who know their stuff and they do it for their love. Um, uh, Mashari Agaido, uh, these are people that I really, really look up to. And they have gone through the hardships of regime, 
challenging the regime and doing stories that really step on toes and ruffle feathers in the high places of authority. And they kept doing it. Um, and I respect that. So hats off to them and hats off to those who are still in the industry uh, and keep doing it, not out of the pay and that it pays, but because they, it's a duty, it's a passion, it's a call. And hats off to them. Being in the media space here as long as you have, I'm sure you have seen our colleagues be impacted by um, budget cuts and layoffs and have personal experiences with this as well, um, as well as what you mentioned, journalists not receiving their salary. Like we saw today a statement that journalists at The Standard have not been paid in the last six months. Um, and in this economy, that's incredibly difficult. And for a journalist to keep showing up at work every single day when they haven't been paid is astounding. But this is the reality that we see, and not just in Kenya, around the world. This is happening to journalists. Um, what advice do you have for a journalist who is currently navigating that struggle? <laughs> I don't know if I'm at the place of advising uh, them to either stay or go because I was lefted. I was lefted from the WhatsApp group. I, I was in the receiving end of what's happening right now in the media space uh, based on a retrenchment that happened a year ago. I was part of it and it happens. It's reality. It's just like the game of tag. You're it. In many aspects of life, it's always going to get to you. So, of course, like they say, our uh, guaranteed destiny is death for each and every one of us. Um, these things happen to all of us. So one day, you're it. And it's not necessarily because someone is being unfair, or oh, oh, yeah, how, why. It happens to the best of us, no pun intended. But it happens. And I would say, when push comes to shove, put you first, you know? Put you first. Yes, there's a call to duty and call to the trade. Keep doing that for as much as you can, for as long as you can. And actually, that is why I, two weeks after the layoff, and thanks to the family at Semabox, big up to them, uh, they gave me an opportunity to do the social newsroom, which we have been doing uh, since I believe it was December, I believe, I may have forgotten, um, of last year. So we're almost clicking a year since we started, two weeks after the layoff. And I credit, I credit them for giving me an opportunity. The reason I do it is because of the passion. They will tell you we, we don't get paid for it. We do it out of love. It's about staying relevant. It's about staying true to the craft and the passion that you have. So if you have the opportunity, again, guys, I've been very fortunate. My story isn't everyone else's. I <laughs> picked up the phone, called my boy Dana Seda. I said, hey, hey, hey this is, uh, I've been thinking about this. Uh, for I think I was sobbing probably, <laughs> but Dana said I should never say that story. Um, no, I wasn't sobbing. I, I just told him, hey, dude, and Dana said it's very realistic. He's like, hey, Buana, pole Buana. Kuja tufanya mambo Buana. So, and we started. Uh, we, we, we visited the Kenyan News Agency and we wanted a partnership with them and months on, social newsroom is happening. So I would advise you, whatever you have in your hands, and these days, this is almost enough. Of course, you need a good mic and, and other, and other uh, technical aspects. The team here will tell you. But what you have in your hand right now, you can actually start there. And there's many people who are watching to give you goodwill. And I, I, I have goodwill. So if, for instance, I was really struggling and I say, hey, guys, I want to put up a studio at home to start my podcast. If I was really keen on it, to, do the, to pursue that aspect, I'm sure one or two people would have said, hey, let's put up a pay bill for Mark, help him put up a studio, buying cameras, and there'll be people. And I remember when I started with the social news, guys were offering to come here to do the shooting and all that. So there's goodwill. So keep doing what you love to do because it, it keeps you alive in many ways. It keeps you going. There's some things we do to keep us alive. Uh, don't, don't let... The, what forms the core of you die. And sometimes you just do it not because you're paid, but because you love it. And it gives you meaning. It helps you wake up uh, to, to do something. 
So keep doing it. But put you first. We know how bad it is. I know people who are still in the media houses and they're saying, hey, we're not getting paid, man. But we still have to be here because it's still a platform for us. Um, and based on that, they do get opportunities, but they're not getting paid. And that's no way of, of, of running a media house. Much as they're struggling because of the revenue streams changing. And if you'll allow me just to give context for anyone who probably doesn't know what we're talking about. The Kenya Union of Journalists posted something earlier today. Uh, this was at 9 a.m. And this was for a press uh, conference. And they say, we will not stand for the impunity and justice that have denied the workers in the media industry their rightful wages. We will launch campaigns to expose the truth and demand justice for our fellow workers who have suffered without pay. Um, and this is specifically to the Standard Group PLC, a company that owns Standard Newspaper, KTN, KTN News, Radio Maisha, Spice FM, Vibes FM, and other media products, has not paid its workers for six months now without any justification. KUJ, that's the Kenya Union of Journalists, uh, as a trade union, has held several meetings with the management during which promises were made, but regrettably not fulfilled. The union intends to launch campaigns against this impunity and injustice at a press conference uh, to be held. That, that was today. And Eric Woodward, the Secretary General, a personal friend of mine, is the one who signed that statement. Just to, the reason I read that out is, A, I have friends at Standard Media Group. These are people with families, with obligations. Even without that, it's just people who are putting in work hours, sweat, and they deserve to be paid. And I believe it's possible if we have enough pressure. So this is necessary. So to the question, I believe this, this is even an answer to the question you asked earlier, directed to me, but it's now facing people who are in the industry. These are the challenges they're facing on the daily. They're not getting paid. In fact, some people call it, no, let me not say it, but they're not getting paid. And they deserve to be paid. And I believe we'll get there and hopefully with a sustained uh, push for that. We're seeing this happen time and time again, and it's not an isolated incident, and it's not just in one newsroom. It really is quite widespread. And I think some people have a sense that there are some people in the media who are untouchable, like someone like Mark Masai, who has a brand and has you know, people across the country who know him, and yet this is something that really impacted you personally. And you made a joke about it saying, oh, you know, I called up Dan Asita and I was sobbing. But let's talk about like the personal impact and, and how that really hit you and like took you by surprise when you were laid off last year. What was, what were you experiencing? And talk to me about, you know, the sense of resilience um, that it took for you to make a pivot to the social newsroom and what it is that you're doing now. It, it took me by surprise. It was a shock. Um, it threw me off. Uh, I, I was shaken. Uh, it wasn't, no lie, I wouldn't say, hey, brush your shoulders off, move on to the next one. No, it was difficult. You, you're making an income. It's your, your main stream of income. I'm um, looking at it as an income because once a journalist, always a journalist. Even regardless who lays you off, doesn't take that journalism from you can still practice it. So that hasn't gone. Mark Masai, the brand, still lives on and can grow depending on the steps that I take, the partnerships that I make. So an encouragement to someone who is afraid of being laid off because you get used. I mean, I was there since 2008. And then, of course, I took that one year break for CCTV, then that came back. Uh, but you kind of get not complacent, but you, you kind of get used to this is home. Like this, you come here every day to work. It's a routine, it's part of your life, kind of almost not DNA, but it's really part of who you are and it becomes part of your identity. Um, so it, it, someone forgets that it can, this can go, yeah? And that was, I mean, I wasn't taking it for granted. I, I appreciated the platform that I had, and I thank God every day, uh, but it took me, took me by surprise. I was really, really, really uh, shocked, but looking at the bigger scheme of things i wasn't i never looked at it as hang on man what why did you you should have you could have i mean you know have you looked at the numbers <laughs> no uh it's world over as you've said it's happening to and i'm you know i'm glad it happened to me and not anyone else there's no one at nation i look at and say should have been that guy should have been that no lady. one really 
<laughs> I don't, because you, you wouldn't wish it on anyone. But it's a reality in the grander scheme of things. It's a reality for the industry. And, you know, every other day you see a statement being put out. And if you read between the lines, it's just saying another one's coming. Another layoff is coming. And, uh, but I'd encourage the guys who are still in the mainstream uh, media, once a journalist, always a journalist, Information is still needed. It's the form in which it is presented and consumed that's changing. Um, but journalism is still relevant. The form is changing. We have to change with the times. And that's not taken away from you. Your name, your credibility, your following, and the brand that you command over time, if you work with it to leverage, if I could use that word, there's no saying where you can go. And uh, it's, it's, it's uncertain. I won't say, okay, go this way. Call Dan Aceda. He'll give you a show. Or call this person. Call that person. Um, I mean, that, that day, it, the day I, I heard of it, there was, was, there was a game going on. I think it was, was it World Cup? No, was it World Cup? There was, a, there was some game, international game going on. So I went and watched the game um, just to get, get my head um, out of that space. And then just as I, has, it, has this happened? It's happened. And got home, sat in the car for a bit, and it's like, yeah, it's happened. But it doesn't change the fact that you have that home, you have the people in that home to take care of, um, and life goes on. NTV's still there, NMG's still there, and I pray that it continues to grow. Um, and you have to go on as well. You can't stagnate. Uh, yes, anyone will advise you in psychotherapy or whatever it is. Uh, talk to someone. M mourn the loss. Because it is a loss. Uh, a bit of you has been taken in terms of what you were used to. And this was income and all. But, I mean, take it in. Accept it for what it is. But move on. Like, move. Don't stay there. Move. Don't brand yourself as a... As a layoff, oh, I'm a layoff. Uh, I was retrenched. Uh, that doesn't become you. You are you, and that remains, and you can grow who you are in your own way. I have no particular ways and answers, but I know there's life after the active newsroom, and there's still opportunities. Who's to say there's no other media house that would come up and say, hey, Mark, there's one way or another we can work together, and... That's cool. We can work together. I have had one or two calls in that aspect, still from the local scene. Um, and at the time, I was like, hey, let me level my head first and see where I'm at. But something else came up. And so I didn't quite pursue that opportunity when it presented itself. Uh, obviously, some people would approach you because uh, they see the opportunity to go with the guy people are talking about. So they can also be in that they can gain from that, yeah. So um, I'm not saying that's how I read them, but I, I just didn't take up the opportunities that presented themselves then. But there is life after the newsroom if you choose to continue uh, outside of that uh, ecosystem. But I'm still in the ecosystem of newsroom, but just in the back end because I'm now in public relations. And I still engage with my brothers and sisters in the media house. And so it continues. It, we need the newsrooms to be alive. Corporates, government, they need information to go out there uh, in the name of civic education, in the name of putting their brands out there and engaging the audience. Yes, you may not have read a paper or bought a paper to read. There's someone who's still reading it. You may not have sat down to listen to a bulletin or watch a news bulletin, but there are people who still uh, consume that. Yes, you may have more, you know, I'd say access to the short clips, not the full-length interview. You may be more of that person who consumes it in bits and pieces, but people are still interested in news. That's why we make, is it memes or memes? We make memes. We're making memes, memes out of the, the ID. By the way, do you all have your IDs, my guy? It's, it's a valuable asset these days. <laughs> Put it in a safe. Put it in a safe. Um, people care. 
That's why we're, that's, what, that's, that's how we are dealing with the news. Back in the day when I started, we had opinion counts. So I don't know if anyone was here when we had, send, send in your opinion, news when you're, why, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> opinion count, yeah, and you'd send your opinion through an SMS and they'll probably read it. These days it's instant. Like guys say, oh, you know, uh, Mark, you shouldn't have asked that question, you should have asked this one. It's instant, you know, with, with technology. So information is still consumed. It's just how it's being consumed that has changed. Mm. And we need to move with that and feed that still in the market. The demand for information is still there. Mm -hmm. So just wake up before some techie just manages to get a way of getting the information to the audience. And they're just sitting uh, somewhere controlling it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we... We still need the journalists. We still need the newsrooms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just a heads up that we are going to have a Q&A segment. So start thinking of your questions um, that you are curious to ask Mark about. And Mark, you talked about life outside and after journalism. You're still involved in journalism, of course, through the social... Um, it's a social newsroom. It's a big name. It's I don't know why you don't remember it. <laughs> it's like every week, every Monday, it's a social newsroom. Yeah. Yeah. So you're obviously still involved in media through the social newsroom. And then you're over on the other side of things in your day job working in PR. So you mentioned a little bit about that. PR is sometimes branded as the dark side. Um, that's definitely what I was told when I was in journalism school. What has that transition been like for you? And what can you share with us about it? You call it the dark side. Kuna nuru gizani. Kuna nuru gizani. It is, it's just a different space. Um, it took getting used to because it's back end. Um, it's more strategy. And that's where I'm growing in still. You put in, I'm not saying we don't put in thinking and strategy in newsrooms, but the way we churn out information in a newsroom on a day-to-day -day basis is, does someone put something else in this coffee? <laughs> it's very fast-paced in the newsroom. In an agency, so shout out to, um, let me put it right, shout out to Her Royal Highness. I heard her being called that. That's my CEO at Professional Marketing Services, Joanne Mwangi Elbert. Cause she called me a couple of days after the news about, oh, uh, Mark Masai Nation. I mean, we were about 30 people, 25 to 30 people that were laid off, by the way. Um, and many, many have gone on to do great things and you know, still some getting their footing, but there's life after the newsroom. But anyway, get, I get lost in my train of thought. But yes, Joanne Mwangiel, but shout out to her. She, she gave me a call and said, hey, I don't know if you know me, if I run an agency, would you want to come and do PR? with us and for us. I said, yeah, I mean, this is what I wanted to transition into anyway within my career. So definitely this is like, this is stars aligning again, fortunate turn of events. And she's been very patient with me um, and, uh, you know, giving me chances and in the space of PR. They call it the dark side because of what is done to put information out there or kill information, not to get it out there in the, it happens in the public relations space, mm -hmm. just as it happens in diplomacy. Mm -hmm. um, these things happen. Uh, there's a lot of things that happen that we don't know because there's someone working hard to keep the information out there or put the information out that would control the popular perception of something. And it's on a daily basis, even how they work on getting to you to buy a certain beverage over another. It's all strategy that goes into it. So PR is a lot of strategy and um, still relations um, with corporates, with newsrooms. So I've been very fortunate, again, I say, because based on my career in the newsroom, mm -hmm. picking a phone call, a, a, call, a phone and calling someone in the newsroom to ask them, hey, we have this function, there's this and that. Um, could we get some coverage? Mm -hmm. It's easier for me than from someone who's just from another industry. Mm -hmm. And hey, shout out to everyone as well in the newsroom who's been very supportive. Even when I put out some uh, statements that had some grammatical errors and you still took it and, 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 you, and you provided coverage. So I see you, appreciate you. 
and it so it took me like six months to really study the ship in terms of yeah so this is how it works and get the hang of things and now <clears throat> almost a year in PR it's it's um a really um I won't just say good space to be um just to say it but it's a good learning curve for me because I've always been keen on getting into diplomacy and um working for PR working on narratives uh is preparing me for that that space um the diplomatic side of things um and yeah is that what's next for you you never know you never know you never know who's watching you never know who's uh yeah who's here yes so probably that is um soon but not not now diplomacy and there's a word i'm forgetting the pro diplomacy and something else that rhymes with diplomacy um i'll get it i'll get it but in a bureaucracy no <laughs> anything but bureaucracy no no <laughs> No, no, anything but bureaucracy. I'll get the word anyway. But um, getting into the space of fighting for a cause, but it's in the name of information. So how you create narratives. And, and that's what a newsroom does. When you say we shape agenda, that's a narrative you're shaping. And so it's, it was a fortunate run for me in the newsroom. It prepared me for what I'm doing right now in the back end. Mm -hmm. And since I understand how newsrooms work, approaching them is easier for me. And of course, having their contacts uh, on the phone is makes it easier for me. Um, and they, they, I haven't yet called anyone, and, and they're like, uh, "Uri Nani," they, they still have my number in their in their phone book. So, <laughs> yeah, I've been fortunate. The transition has been very gracious, in many ways, based on the chance that I got and the favor that I and goodwill that I enjoy still in the newsroom. So, I mean, if there's anyone who is looking forward to a very hard difficult you know feedback story from me sob sob i'm sorry to disappoint but it has been i'm selling hope because that's really what it's been for me and i believe it's a portion for anyone else out there we all have our different um turns in life um and by the way it hasn't been all hopeful uh and this is something that i haven't quite shared on such a platform uh, i had two opportunities to join cnn and at the last point, things just caved in. Um, and that really, really, really got me down. Like, uh, once was in 2019, and then the other one was in 2021. I was like, almost, almost. So it hasn't always been uh, a tryout, and then someone just said, hey, uh, this is for you. Come on, Mark, we want to work with you. No, no, no. There's there's no's in my in my journey as well, but some of them are really not now, um, and you'll see that very soon. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that because, like I said, I think there is this perception that maybe someone like Mark Masai is always getting yeses, but you get some no's as well. Um, so, final question for you, Mark. Like everyone else in the city, you're a hustler. And you have a lot of you have a lot of side hustles that you've been doing for Zakayo years. <laughs> Zakayo. <laughs> so you're an actor, you're an entrepreneur, you do voiceovers, you're an MC, moderator, etc. Why don't hey, you talk me, to me us stop, about let your me hustles? Stop, let me stop you at that point. Let me stop you at that. That you, I see you've read my 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 uh, profile because that's what I put on my profile. Um, you know, uh, entrepreneur, budding um, actor or entrepreneur <laughs> this is what i aspire to okay oh jackie this is what i aspire to lies it's what you do it's what <laughs> but, you do but yes i did have a stint in acting and it's something i've always been interested in and fortunate enough uh i got a call again hey hey mark we work for showmax and we would like you to uh, be part of a series and would you be interested and i'm like heck yeah I've been I've been wanting to to get back into acting and in the acting space, and um, I'm I'm really really glad for that experience. But I do voiceovers. Uh, I still do voiceovers for clients, the corporates. But that side of business is also drying up. Um, I do corporate events. I do moderation for corporate events, uh, MCing moderation, 
uh, thought leadership type of con conversations going continental uh, uh, very, very soon. Actually, into the next year, we will be doing more things on the continent. Um, and it's based on, let me, let me bring it back a bit and say earlier I did mention, oh, I, we don't do social newsroom for pay. So much as that is probably not the case on a week-to-week -week basis where like an episode is sponsored, look at it this way. And I believe this is what has happened. When people see you're still in the current affairs space, thought leadership space, and you're actually engaging thought leaders in conversations on a weekly basis, they still associate you with authority and credibility. And they're like, hey, I saw him interview so-and-so. See, we, we call him to do this and that with our launch or our function. So it has paid off in that way. I would have chosen to be like, oh, sob, sob, genie, go uh, sit there, maybe go to Shago, uh, Shago, uh, up country, um, and just count the sheep that I have. I think I have five now, um, and and you know, count my wealth and my blessing. Look at where my my beacons are. Uh, if someone has edged into my property uh, back back at home, but you don't do that, um, and as there's something else I need to say, and I don't know if I'm putting this out too much, but I did this deliberately. Uh, you know, when, when, you're, when you're retrenched and all, you, you don't quite, you, you, have, you have some benefits, yeah? So I didn't run to get the benefits. I actually pushed that to the back banner, and now I'm going to clear it so I can get it, but I did it deliberately not to tell myself, hey, I have fallback of money um, to use and utilize. Again, I'm fortunate enough n to be able to have managed somehow. Um, but I didn't say, hey, let me clear and jipanga with this pension because I would have laid back. I would have been like, hey, there's some amount. If I, if I pay off maybe my rent for a year, if I, if I do this, if I put some in this and this investment, so do this, do that. If you plan it with that, this is money that was earned over the years. Um, it's not money I'm earning now. Why not earn money now and put that somewhere? So my encouragement is, is just don't, don't, don't be caught up in the past. There's so much more that you can do to answer the question of the hustles. I don't quite put it as hustles. These are opportunities for me and the platforms that I, I get to um, explore and utilize, and it's been very, again, very fortunate for me. Um, I, I thank God. <laughs> Something moving, though. When, when the news went out, there's two people who called. Yeah? My friends. And I won't say their names because they're people who like to be very behind the scenes. And one person, she's a lady, a pastor, and she said, Abdul, because she still calls me Abdul. Squile uta utakosa pesa yangata nipigie. The day you won't have money for fuel, call me. Because I know you can get there. Another guy just called me and we went to the car wash. And because <clears throat> he knows me very well. And he says, yo, so sorry, man. I just wanted you to know if you need anything, just call me. I'm there. Just Just call me. Don't don't, I, I would hate to see you or your family go suffer or go lacking in what they've been having right now. Uh, you just call me, yeah? And it's good to have people that you can... I didn't even call them. I didn't reach out to them. But it, it's, if, if you don't have one or two people who can call you to tell you that, you need to re, uh, revisit your list of friends, yeah? <laughs> yeah, so that, that, has really, that has really helped, uh, helped me in... Just having that, like knowing that you have backup. And yeah, I'd, I'd encourage those who, who feel that it's the end. It's not. It's not. Something just comes out. <laughs> I have many friends who left the newsroom and they were, they've been, and, but this is not a narrative to tell people, leave the newsroom en masse. No. Please, you have a place uh, in the newsroom. Please keep doing uh, service and, and you know, giving that service to the people. They need you. We need you. The nation needs you. 
we see what's happening in Israel, in Gaza. Information uh, is being bandied about in one way or another. The truth needs to come out. We need information. Uh, so please, don't give up on the newsroom, even though things are getting uh, a bit tougher. We just need to look at a different source of uh, income. If you were used to one stream, one platform, one source, let's start exploring others. And there's still hope. And I really do pray that our newsroom stand and grow and give an opportunity to the guys who are here who'd want to work in a newsroom. Let's not even try and pit mainstream against digital and say, oh, uh, digital is a future uh, to death, uh, to hell with the mainstream. No, 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 no. We need to all coexist and grow. And I know there are people who still want to work in a newsroom. Don't kill that dream just because you hear things are different. And, and tell you what, uh, I was mumping to someone about, oh, the <coughs> taxes and everything. And he gave me a perspective. He's actually called, he's my boy called one guy, and I'll read it um, just so that it can give you a bit of a perspective in terms of career and whether or not you should join. And so I was just sending him these forwards that uh, make him rounds. And, and he says, uh, sorry, give me a second. Yeah, I don't know why people are surprised, though. It has always been like that. Kufinyo by Gava is part of the game of life. From the days of Modogo to date, it keeps getting worse. We elect thinking the new guy will like us enough to not hurt us. But that has never and will never happen. Inginess uh, Tasoma. One guy, though, he said that. And, and I challenge him to actually make a song about it because he's also a musician and he's a lawyer. But that's the same thing even for, translate that to the newsroom. I don't think it will be very naive of us to ex expect that things get easier. These are just challenges that push us to get creative about how we can still keep journalism alive. In what form. Uh, that we should. Uh, and things have happened in different careers where new technology has disrupted how things used to be. But the career is still there. It's just how you have to adapt to and um, actually apply some of the new technology in your day-to-day -day work. So it just changes how we work and how we approach it. But please, if you're out there, if you are there and you want to still be in a newsroom, uh, I'd encourage you to do that. Because without the newsroom, you guys wouldn't be seated here listening to me. <laughs> You know, like you wouldn't know who Abdul is. Um, it's I have I have me I have the, the newsroom to thank for who I am today, and so don't don't lose hope. Thanks. I was worried there that we weren't going to end on a hopeful note with you saying our politicians don't care about us. And I was like, this is not how we need to end right that now. That is another <laughs> episode. That is another episode. <laughs> that yeah. is. That is. Thanks so much, Mark. I'm going to pass it over to anyone in the audience who wants to ask a question. So please just raise your hand um, and you'll get. Oh, perfect. There's a microphone there for you. Mm, hello, Jackie. Hello, hello. Mark Masai. My question hey. is, uh, say you're working for an organization and you, you're trying to separate like the brand of the company and your personal brand, as you still work there, but you also are able to really to develop as a, let's say, freelancer or even like a media company maybe in future. How, are you, how do you separate the brand of the company from the personal brand? How do you do that? She was looking at you when she was asking the question. <laughs> yes. So let me answer it. Um, I, so let me ask you, first of all, the brand that you would want to grow, the personal brand, in its trajectory or in its core, is it still related with the company's brand in terms of what you would want to grow in? It's the same thing. So I'd say complement. So, for instance, if I went somewhere, someone wouldn't want to just work with Mark Masai just. Oh, it's Mark Masai of NTV. You're that guy. You know, so there's some credibility because they trust, they know the brand NTV, so they want to work with Mark Masai uh, based on that. But how I separated and grew my brand, remember I told you I left CCTV, came back to NTV, and one of the things that my mentor then was challenging me, go Yodera, Marco Dinge, uh, big up to you. He told me, 
dude, start your own show. Yeah? It's still a show on NTV, but it's a show that is associated with Mark Masai. Uh, press pass. I don't think you guys remember it, but I'd, I'd give you an, a, a, a question. Who do you remember the trend being for? The trend. when you Larry, that's brand. He, he grew it. He just hit it out of the park with, with that brand. And he grew and he's now doing great things um, at CNN. Yeah. So you can still use the platform. So look at that brand of where you are as a platform. Because it's through that platform it gives you access to meet people who are in the industry that you want to grow in personally with your brand. Yeah. So don't disassociate necessarily and thinking that's the way to grow yours. Work with it to grow yours, and that's through access, through interaction with the people in your space. Uh, but then now use that so you have travel to places you probably would have never gone based on who you work with. And through that travel, you might make one contact uh, in the middle of nowhere, and that one contact might reach out to you personally and ask, hey, would you be able to put me in touch with guys in our profession? I want to do a function for us. And you do it, and you pull it off, and you're like, hey, I can do this. That was on a personal basis. They approach you on a personal basis because they can't afford the company. Um, and based on that experience, this is just an example. Yeah? you grow your own brand as well. So that's how I used the NTV brand and platform to grow the Mark Masai brand through what we launched as Press Pass. And also, uh, just your persona. You be strategic about it. Uh, somehow, people associate you to some way. So somehow, at some point, I was that guy who asked uh, certain questions. I'm like, hey, if you know me, I'm, the, I'm like the nicest guy. I've been branded like rude and all because of some questions that I've asked in my, in, my, in my time at NTV, and I appreciate the opportunity that I had. But I had no intention to be rude. I was just asking questions and going with it. So, but because of that, people remember you for something, and you can use even instances to grow your brand, to be that guy uh, who does it this way and that way. What, what profession, if I may ask? Ah, okay. I mean, health will always be relevant for us. Uh, I know of a Nigerian guy. I think he's a doctor himself. And he does these short clips on Instagram. I forget the name. And he wears glasses. And he busts myths, medical myths. Perhaps, you know, when you say, let's feed... Uh, you know, give children oranges so that they can have vitamin D, perhaps if that's a, a common notion. And he busts it with fact. Uh, and even um, Dr. Rain does that. Our Dr. Rain, uh, Daktari, pediatrician. He's a pediatrician. Um, he does that locally. He, you know, goes against what is commonly held and backs it with fact. So you can do that on this platform. You know, and be, and be consistent and you'll gain a following. As long as you have the facts and credibility, you'll gain the following over time. Because people will know, hey, that, that, that lady is doing a live nini about, you know, uh, what hair treatment bald men can have, you know, they can grow hair. I'll follow you and I'll pay you good money. <laughs> <laughs> Come up with that. I'll be, we'll pay, you'll get good money. I trust you, me. Yeah. That's really solid advice. Um, I think Mark is maybe outlined a few different ways that you can pursue building your brand outside of that. If I could just add my two cents, what I would say is I think it's really important to pursue your interests and passions outside of your work as well. And sometimes they might align with your work, but that can open up so many different doors for you. So just to give an example, 10 years ago, I was living and working as a journalist in Ghana, and I came across um, a group of children who would run like a social justice and writing club in the slum. And they were brilliant um, young kids. And I just got attached to them and started spending my weekends with them. They would meet on Saturday mornings. And I would go there to learn from them more, more than anything, right? And just to encourage them to keep doing what they're already doing, which is talking about some social issues that were happening in their community and trying to write articles about it. And so 
I started, you know, meeting up with them quite regularly and supporting them in media training and connecting them to journalists and giving them a newsroom tour and just supporting in ways that I felt like I could and realized that this was something I'm really passionate about is working with young people and people from vulnerable and marginalized backgrounds and teaching them and supporting them as they tell their own stories and amplifying their voices. And it's something that I continued to do over the years, even when I moved to Kenya, I connected with a friend of mine who started an initiative called Habari Kibra, and they do storytelling in Kibera and a few other informal settlements here in Nairobi. And it's something that I was drawn to, and I thought, okay, I want to keep doing this, I want to keep supporting people, you know, in that way. And just one opportunity led to another and to another, and I was able to, by following a passion, also build up my experience as a media trainer and someone who supports others in being able to tell their own stories. And over the years, I have led formal workshops because it's opened the door for that. I have taught university um, students in journalism. I'm developing a course right now on reporting for journalism students and for journalists. And all that happened because I decided to kind of follow like a feeling and a passion of mine. And so whatever it is, whether it's, you know, going on Instagram Live and sharing health tips or hair growth, as Mark suggested, or, or whatever it else it is, I think if you just follow your passions outside of your eight to five, it can lead down the line to some really cool opportunities and you'll be able to connect the dots later on. Yeah. Fun fact, we used, did we say this? We used we to didn't. work together yeah, yeah. At, at Nation 2016. Yes. And she's been here, she's a freelancer, uh, can I say this to the, the authorities are watching? PR consultant? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, she, I do comms. She, yeah, and so that's, I believe, what she's saying. Explore other things and passions. Because mm -hmm. you might just, it comes to you to be strategic. You just, you sit down and you're talking to someone and you tell them, so we'll find it. They, they present you with an issue, a challenge. They want to talk to someone and they're not sure how to approach it. And just naturally you tell them, oh, okay, so um, what is their current position on this? They tell you, and then you just advise them, and you seamlessly or easily just be strategic, give them a strategy to approach, and perhaps that's her like a gifting. She knows how to be strategic on placing some stories on some platforms uh, and telling stories that would actually sell. Um, she, it's something that she's passionate about. She does it on the side, and so, yeah. I've remembered the word. It's advocacy, diplomacy, advocacy. I told you it rhymes with diplomacy. So yeah. I'm growing into the space of advocacy, and I ultimately my goal is diplomacy. Um, I, I, love, I love working in the space of uh, government relations and seeing how things are run. And part of it, the dark side, I guess, is when they say PR is dark and it vibes with me, there's a manipulative aspect of it because you control what people think through information. That's 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 some magic. That's um, you and it's it's so rewarding to see you've done something, uh, you worked on, and it's now um, out there in the public because you're controlling information in a certain way. Narratives. Look, if you look at life as narratives, you'll you'll understand things in a different way. Mm -hmm. There's narratives all all over. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm sure there was a question. Any other questions from our audience here? All right, good, uh, good evening, everyone. Mine is not a question, but it's a comment. And uh, my name is John Wambugo. I work for Canon, and I'm happy to see some of our products here that you guys are using. Um, just to say thank you, because I think you're very, very brave to have uh, you know, shared your story, as well as just you know, facilitating that as well, so thank you. But to share your story as well, and to encourage people that even if there's a small bend on the road, it's not the end of the of the journey and that you have to always keep on you know keep on moving i think you echo the the fact that you know the future at times might be you know might be beyond you know that vision but it is not entirely out of our control and i think that's very very brave of you to actually share this and to see that you're still you know pushing on and i think that's very very commendable so thank you asante sana for sharing uh, your asante, story asante, asante as well. do, do you have family may i ask 
Sorry? Do you have family, kids? Yes, for sure. I do. Uh, okay. yeah. They're declared, eh? Sorry? They're, they're declared that you can say this on air. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. So I'd give credit and say thank you, first of all, for your, for your comment. But I'd give credit as well to my family. And when you have, I have a five year old and a two year old, five months. Nashipai, Lemayan, and, and um, my wife, Fiona. When you have that, there's, there's a push it gives you. Um, it just, you have to, you wake up. Because they don't know what's going on. Lemayan is, he wakes up, he's laughing with me. Um, <laughs> is this the other, just soon after, like a week after Nation happened, and Nashipai, who's a bit perceptive now, she asks, Daddy, you, lo you, you lost your job. <laughs> she's asking this, laughing, and she's I'm like, ay, 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 un toto yo. <laughs> it's too soon, too soon. <laughs> but when you have those young ones, man, they're looking at you with expectation. They don't understand what's going on, the context of it. They just expect daddy will provide. Uh, for me, that pushed me. Because if I was a youngin and like just without that family aspect, things would have played off differently. I would have, A, taken my pension, my, my, my benefits, gone on a ka holiday, and then come back to now think about how <laughs> <laughs> things can work. So I credit them as well. Asante sana. So thank you. Thank you. We probably have time for one more question. Here in the front. Okay, we'll take your question too. <laughs> So you mentioned that um, before the <laughs> the retrenchment. <laughs> too soon. Too soon to laugh. <laughs> too soon. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Before you you said that at some point you know because of being there for a long time you had become a bit complacent. Yeah. I think okay. I actually said the opposite of that. I said I never really got complacent, but it's just that it gets part of you, it's be, it becomes part of your daily routine, that you just see yourself there. You don't, you haven't imagined a reality out, out, outside of that. But carry on with the train of thought. Yeah, so that's what I meant, yeah? So now after that, um, you know, just in terms of maybe, you know, a, a later on in life, like this being the best thing that would have ever happened at this time, how did that change you in terms of drive, in terms of going after stuff? That How did that make you recalibrate? It, in many ways, like I look back and I say, it's opened my eyes to what I ha wouldn't have seen or wouldn't have imagined. And I'm grateful for that. And like, for instance, not being on air as a news brand allowed me to be engaged in an acting piece called... Uh, Oh, go watch it, uh, Showmax. Uh, it's called Faithless, and I'm an inspector called Henry. Um, I do a heck of a job, if I can say so myself. <laughs> but it gives me an opportunity to do what I wouldn't have done had I been on there. And I know that experience, at some point, that will be a step to something else based on my experience there. So... I'm grateful looking back that I'll, that happened because I was now able to do that. I'm now able to do this, see that the digital space is actually open for business. And we have, much as I've said, not every episode has been sponsored. There are episodes where partners have come and said, we want to do an episode on this and that. And you see possibilities. It just opens your mind. You're used to one way. In fact, a nation, I never dealt with the corporate, in the corporate side in terms of selling an episode or anything. It was more the sales team um, and hats off to them. They work their themselves out, <laughs> themselves out. Um, still 7.30, yeah, they work themselves out and I respect what they do. Um, and so for me, it allowed me to do things I wouldn't have done otherwise. And just also time with fam. I tuck my kids in bed more. <laughs> it's just, for me, is is just, it's giving. My goodness, it is giving. Um, we're trying to party train our second born. That's not giving. But just being <laughs> part of the experience. Um, yeah, like today, I, I helped him actually do the first wee wee. Um, that's, that's memories. Like, yeah, I, I was there when, I wouldn't have been there because I would have been in a newsroom working to prepare for the bulletin. Um, but I'm, I'm present. 
and I believe it's like a phase. It's, and that's why I say it doesn't mean I'll never work in a newsroom. I might go back in one way or another. <clears throat> but this phase, it allowed me to be part and parcel of my, my child's life. Today, I was at my second born's play group just to see the progress. I wouldn't have been there. I would have said, oh, Nico, busy because state of the nation. I would, have been at, I would have been in the newsroom, I guarantee you, because we go wall to wall, live coverage. Um, and so I'm more present uh, for fam. And for me, that you cannot put any amount of figure to it. Ah, yeah, 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 that, that one. Yeah. But I really pray we get through this potty training period. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's trying. It's, it's trying more than giving. I hope I've answered your question. Uh, cool, cool. One more final question here in the front before we wrap things up. Hello. My name is Caleb Apollos. Uh, I tend to presume as much as you're growing your brand when you're in the newsroom, also your side gigs really helped you. I'll present you with a scenario. Your, I know this has probably happened to you in one way or the other. You're supposed to be in the newsroom on the evening shift. Then you have this event you're supposed to be moderating that spills over to some, some part of your time that you're supposed to be at work. How did you strike the balance in between? Yo, local arrangements, my brother, local arrangements. <laughs> <laughs> you just call in someone, like I'd call in Smriti, uh, if that ever happened, and I'll be like, hey, Smith, or even someone like Olive Burrows or Dan Mwangi. And you're like, hey, um, we need to, I need to do 1212. Two. Is that language? People understand. So you just do local arrangements, and, and it still goes on because people understand that you, you need that, that income. So um, people would cover for each other. As long as a, this the bulletin is on air and no one goops, um, God forbid when there's breaking news and you're not close, you know, and that, that fortunate for me has not happened uh, at because I was at a gig. Uh, so, but for me, I remember at that time, I actually turned down quite a few quite some gigs because I said, no, sorry, I am on duty. And I just didn't have the bandwidth for me to uh, do all that. I respect some people like, like Larry. I know Larry, man. Larry, I don't, know, I don't know if he slept. I remember there's a point when we used to work together and he just tell you the, the number of things he did in a day. You're like, wow, oh, this guy's a vampire. I mean, you just, <laughs> it's just not human, you know? Uh, but you know, tells you why he is where he is. Uh, so local arrangements worked for us uh, yeah. a lot. I, I'm more interested in knowing now, apart from the local mm -hmm. arrangement, how did this affect your work now with your bosses? Probably the relationship. Did it ever affect you at any point? So if, for instance, if a boss, yes, if a boss expected to see you on a bulletin because there's a, there's a schedule out every week, and they knew, oh, it's meant to be Mark. And then they see someone else. And at some point, our bosses, uh, they're quite, they're, they're smart. Because they also have their own side gig. Um, I remember, I mean, Emmanuel Juma, he's, he was gracious. Uh, he's like, Mark, where are you? Uh, <laughs> That's uh, you know, exactly what he sounds yeah. like. <laughs> <laughs> Emmanuel Juma, hats off to him and salute to him. He was my managing editor for most of my time at Nation. And, and so it would, it would kind of put us in trouble, but they understood as long as it's not repeated and it doesn't expose us like you find those instances where a swahili anchor would do the one o'clock english bulletin because the anchor on duty wasn't around um i don't i don't think it's because of gigs um maybe i don't know i don't know <laughs> <laughs> maybe the previous night was heavy uh, but, <laughs> but it it so it got us in trouble one of, you know, you'd be asked, why were you not on? And then you, you, you explain. And then just be human. Just tell, come clean and just say, sir, I did this. But I know of some instances where those side gigs put my colleagues in trouble because the bosses felt it conflicted with their news brand. Mm -hmm. Them engaging with certain brands conflicted with the news brands. And in some newsrooms, it's actually now policy. There's some things you can't do. Uh, so you see, to answer your question as well, I'm not at liberty to engage with more brands in a certain way than I would have as a news brand because it's a bit restrictive. So that puts some people in trouble where they even had to cancel some contracts 
with brands that they had started working with and the bosses said no. And it c cost some their jobs. I think you know which story. That just Google. There was a betting company. Uh, 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 just Google. <laughs> just go Google. You'll see who, who was on the receiving end of that, I believe, a bad choice because the person really wasn't doing anything out of spite. Yeah. So I, th I just think they, they, they didn't go about it the right way. But it's cost people, some people, their jobs. Thank you. Thanks for all your questions. This wouldn't be a fireside chat without some rapid fire questions at the end. Let's go. So, all right. Um, Mark, fiction or nonfiction? Nonfiction. Pen and paper or laptop? Laptop. Early morning writing or late night writing? Late night. Writing in silence or to background music? If it's personal, silence. If it's work, at some point, with music. Yeah. Tea or coffee? Coffee. Call or text? Text. Gin or whiskey? Eh? <laughs> He is a man of He's God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an honest man. So you said, Ati, gin? Gin or whiskey? Beer. Mm. Yeah. But okay. now, if now, so between the two, whiskey. Mm. But beer is home. Shout out to all the people out there. We can collaborate. I could be your influencer. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I told, I told you he's a hustler. I said that, okay? <laughs> and last one, Chapo Madondo or Chapo Ndego? Chapo Madondo. Yeah, okay. yeah. Ndengu kind of, they both kind of do a number on my, like, give me some acidity. Mm -hmm. But Mandondo. And then, you know, you know, it, the atmosphere kind of changes after Mandondo. If you know what I mean? I don't know what you mean, come actually. On, come <laughs> on, you know, it gets, gets you gaseous and stuff. <laughs> gets me, sorry. Gets me gaseous and stuff. Not me. Absolutely not. You? not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you, Brayo Kevo. Oh, that's a, that, that's a tough one. Oh, um, oh, 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 there's an answer. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't. I don't even know what you're saying. Oh, okay. Unfortunately. All right. All right, cool, 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 cool. Uh, Kenya or Ghana? You know, uh, <laughs> I love, I love and respect both countries Oh, this so is a much. diplomatic answer. <laughs> I learned from the best. I'm learning from you. <laughs> I mean, I, I rep Kenya everywhere I go. And, and Ghana's in my heart, so... There we go. I anyway, I <laughs> 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 thank you. Thank you all for. <laughs> oh, OK. Does anyone else want to ask a quick rapid fire question to Mark? You got to You got to think on your feet here. Anything except they've wanted to ask. Are we still Mbessa. recording? Is this still live streaming? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because just, at this point, just to add, really some, just to add some spice, just to add some spice to it. <laughs> okay, so Mark is ready to answer any question apparently, and he said he's ready to add some spice to it. So this is your opportunity if anyone wants to ask him a question. Ooh. Except who say, who leaves a soul, yeah. Going five times. Gone. Oh, yeah, he's asked, he has a question. Do it. Doris, don't worry. Don't worry. This is safe. We have a lawyer. He has a question. Caleb has a question. Yeah. Caleb has a question. I'll, I'll give you, you, you I know you, you listen to podcasts. Right now, there are two kind of good podcasts that say they're coming up so well. There's the Mark Check podcast, and the mics are open. The Mark Mark Check podcast, the mics are open. In between, I don't know if you've listened to eight of them, eight of the two. Oh. But and to answer your question as well further, the kind of podcast I vibe with and I find myself listening to is where people get um, real raw and they speak about uh, perspectives of life, not in the neatest or most conventional way, but they say it as it is. You take it or leave it. It's it's up to you and your socialization in your life experience so maybe i'm giving away something we're coming up with doris so yeah thank you asante asante sana 
Thank you, Mark, for this great conversation and for your openness and vulnerability in sharing your journey. And hopefully everyone who is attending here with us and everyone who is watching this on YouTube can take from your journey. And thank you to Baraza Media Lab for this opportunity and platform. I think we need more conversations, especially for the media space and what it's going through and what we can do to change the fortunes. And I'm sure many people watching would want to collaborate. So Cynthia is very open to collaborate and help uh, that push that conversation uh, moving forward. Cynthia is way back there. Is there a camera? No? Okay. But she's from Baraza. Follow Baraza Media Lab on all the socials. Uh, Baraza Media and as well Cynthia Mudoni, or is it? Do you have a cryptic name to it? You can shout. It's okay. <laughs> it wasn't a fireside chat, but any, anyway, all good, all good. Engage with Baraza Media from whatever, whatever you know, media. I mean, a career background you're in. Uh, they want to talk. They want to open this space. And I thank you for the opportunity to share this. And thank you for you guys for turning up. Thanks, everyone. Great job, Habib. Thanks, Mark. Let's have a round of applause for Mark and Jackie.